Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana channel. My name is Shanks and today once again we are on the beautiful map Anorian in a phenomenal matchup between Rohan Isengard against Gondor Isengard. We have at the bottom right side the Isengard player Altaria, his ally is the green Rohan player Ragnar. They are against the grey Gonzo player Jekyll and his ally is the yellow Isengard player Felix Anius. And yeah, I'm asking, you know, I can hear you asking, okay Shanks, but why always Anorian? And that's a very good question, which I can answer simply like that. It's the most played map. It's the most uh, optimal map. Because of the size, it's perfect. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's balanced, you know. It's pretty, pretty unique map, which is the reason, the main reason why it's being played this many times. And trust me on that one, like this map has been potentially be, been played on like thousands and maybe millions of times already. So Isengard player was going through the bottom side, to the harassment at the bottom left side, to his opening Felix Anios. He's also gonna capture this one potentially. We will see about that. Jekyll, the Gonda player, is asking to group with his ally to go for a, you know, war chant together to deal as much economical damage as possible. And the yellow Isengard player Felix Anius was pretty much doing the same thing. So this mill is going down for sure. Peasants are not war chanted. Looks like the purple Isengard player is saving up his war chant for now. Maybe he will be using that on the peasants for defense. Maybe that's gonna be his plan. Who knows? And Gondo is making a smart move. I like this move actually quite a lot. He's going to creep the war clan with the help of the war chant, which is making his units deal 50% more damage, but more importantly in this situation, making them also 50% tankier. And Isengard is still holding his war chant. Has now three furnaces inside the base. And he has now still two mills, but that's gonna not last for a while because the mill in the front side is gonna be definitely taken down. While the yellow Isengard player lost both the mills, which he was able to buy, at least one of them. He has also two furnaces inside the base and was, you know, building two towers just to feel a bit more safe. He was also using the warchan on the peasants, and the peasants are gonna be able to take down this farm. Even though they are kind of vulnerable against the hobbit's peregrine truck, uh, but it's still fine, you know? Many, many more peasants are coming for the defense. The soldier is level 2. That's gonna be hard to deal with. And also with the help of the soldier, of course, he was able to get the money from the creep, which is gonna give him the chance to build the stable a bit faster. He has already two blacksmiths and two farms inside. But unfortunately, he will be losing also every single outside farm. Yeah, that, that's kinda bad though. Because Isengard was able to recover already. Look, he has still three mills under his control. And the soldiers, they are getting out spammed. With the help of the hobbit, Mary. The Rohan player will be able to help his ally out. He might be even able to save this mill because look how many lumber mill workers are repairing. Do you see that? Did he actually use Warchan once again? Uh, the answer is no, he didn't use Warchan once again. It's almost up. And also this mill is going down. Great amount of economical damage dealt to the Gondor Isengard team, definitely. And that's the power of Rohan early on because you have the chance to summon and spam so many additional peasants from the farms inside and outside of your base all the time, you know? And they are also very cost efficient, they cost you only 100 resources, so... And again, you being able to recruit units from your resource buildings actually kinda insane, especially early mid game. And also even late game against factions like Isengard, which are gonna spam eventually many many pikemen to counter your Rohirrim. You can simply counter that by getting some peasants. And the amount of speed you have is actually insane, because the Rohan faction works like that. The more map control you have, the easier you will get even more map control. And now going for another attack with Peasants, level 2. <laughs> he was throwing rock on the head of the Lumberman worker there. <laughs> Alright, this mill is going down at the bottom right side for sure. You have also Lourdes on the field. Uh, Lourdes is not going to be that effective as from the, you know, purple Isengard player. Because Lourdes is only good against Rohirrim, not that great against Gondor Knights. Rohirrim are a bit squishier against heroes like Lourdes or Legolas in compared to the Gondor Knights. But look at the base difference, do you see that? We have full base for the purple Isengard player, and we have only 3 furnaces and lords for the yellow Isengard player. He needs to recover first. He was down a lot. Warchan has been used on 2 of these, but Rohirrim were still able to get the creep. The money is gonna be secured also by the Rohan player, actually buff the money, which is very unfortunate for the Gondor player right there. The Hobbit is gonna be definitely taken down. You know, Merry can't handle the situation against Gondor Knights, especially when they are Warchanted. There is no way. But I need to say, uh, the Rohan Isengard team, they are doing a phenomenal job. They are bringing the fight to them, you know? And during all this time, the purple Isengard player is still untouched. With three mills outside, which are now being untouched for the past two minutes, trust me on that one, he's gonna grow rich, guys. Like, richy rich. And, of course, 
the power of Rohan Isengard team is gonna hit like a truck because Rohan has the chance to eventually get, you know, Theoden on the field for like free 50% damage and armor leadership, which can stack with the War Chant. Long story short, you can make your units extremely strong. What Condor can, what Condor can kinda counter with his Elvin Wood. Elvin Wood, however, is a double edged sword in this matchup. Might be useful in the first at the first place, but later on you might regret that. Because the way the Alvin Woods or Tainted Land work in BFME 1 is simple. Like, we have in both sides Isengard included, right? And eventually they're gonna reach the point in which they will be unlocking the Freezing Rain from the Spellbook, which is gonna nullify all the enemy leadership bonuses for the entire map. But if the Gondor player uses uh, Alvin Wood and the Yellow Isengard player using Freezing Rain, all the other team has to do is step on the enemy Alvin Wood and step, you know, off it. And boom, you have your leadership back, even if the rain is going to be used very recently. So it's a double-edged sword, like mentioned before. Okay, he was using the Palantir. Both players were using the Palantir. There is no way or no reason of chasing anymore. Palantir is being used in this matchup many, many times, because it's going to make the allied Gondor Knight slash Rohirrim move 15% faster, which is giving you the, the chase potential. And still a lot of pressure on the bottom left side team, but not that much pressure on the bottom right side team. The fight, uh, he has blades, you can fight this. Lourdes is also here, almost level 4. Where is the other Lourdes though? Oh, that's the Lourdes from him actually. Trying to kill Gondor Knights left and right, almost level 4. And if he gets level 5, that's gonna be a huge achievement, because that means even more leadership for the Rohan Isengard team. That means 60% more damage leadership, which again can stack with the Warchant and Theorian leadership. So in total... That's gonna make quick math 160% more damage, which is kinda insane if you ask me. This Lourdes is level 4, once again it's kinda easier to deal with Rohirrim, especially because in most cases, Gonda is gonna be the one who will get uh, the upgrades a bit faster, you know, than Rohan. Because Armour is an additional building, while Gonda can just buy the upgrades from the Blacksmith, which are also working like a resource building at the same time, so you don't need to invest 1300 for a building first. The level 4 Gondor Knight is gonna be safe for now, that's pretty important. Lourdes is basically level 5, this one is only level 4. And Rohan is going for the Armory. I would like to see Theodine instead, because I'm assuming this Isengard is gonna get ready way way sooner than the Isengard player Felixanius, because his eco is just much greater. So if you are in a situation like that, I believe the best thing that you can do as Rohan, and what you should be doing, is get Theodine on the field, and Go for the attack ASAP, you know? When you know, and they need to know now, they are experienced players, that the uh, Yellow Isengard player Felix Anius is kind of behind. And after that, as Rohan, you can always buy the camp in the middle, build some statues and wells. Oh, this is no Orkhorn. He's summoning the Alvin Warriors for a potential rush. Okay, that's what's gonna happen. He has also shields, okay? Shields, blades and elves. Warshan has been used on this Rohirrim. Warchan has been used on his Alvin Warriors. Remember, with the shields, they are extremely tanky against arrows. It means they can tank these towers, especially with the Warchan together. They can tank these towers for ages. They will basically take no damage. Elves are being deal dealt with, you know, from the Rohirrim. They're gonna eventually die. Pikes are on the hand. But that's gonna buy, if nothing else, enough time for the Yellow Isengard player to get back into the game, to eventually build an army worthy of Moro for a potential big commitment. Nice micro from the Gonzo player, great amount of damage dealt. And not about the damage he's dealing, but also, you know, he's forcing his opponent to use the Warchan defensively. Which again, is always nice. Pressure is nice, because pressure is gonna cause defense for your enemy team, for the enemy team. And that's gonna give you, give you and your ally the time you need to scale, to build an army, to get upgrades, to get eventually heroes, to get power points from that. Even though the yellow, uh, the green Rohan player was doing a good job uh, pressuring at the same time, Gondo has only one farm outside. He lost his farm. It's kind of tough to see, you know, when the color is gray, which is the same color from the creeps. It's hard to see on the minimap. Lourdes is almost level five. This one is already level five. He's running for his life. Cripple is an anti-hero ability. So losing this Lourdes would be really bad for Felix Anius. He's now building Armory too. He was able to purchase. Heavy armor, fire arrow, yet for now, and a banner and forge blades need to be purchased. In this matchup, you also need forge blades for your combos because you will have to fight so many horses, you know. And this Rohan might also be able to get later on the horseman shield, 
which is gonna make also his Rohirrim extremely tanky against arrows. But once again, that's the advantage from Gonzo against Rohan. Gondo needs to only build three or recruit three Gondo Knights for him to get the stable to level two. While Rohan has to do five, get five Rohirrim on the field. Or uh, like four Rohirrim archers, you know? So it's harder for Rohan to get it to level two for the Horseman Shield. Which means 75% pierce, pierce armor. Again, that is going to be able to stack with the with the heavy armor of yours. And you can become this way extra... Oh, he lost the Rohirrim. That's very unfortunate. This one is going to be at least able to survive. Almost level 5 would be a shame if you lose him. Run, run, run. Oh, he's being gate rushed potentially. Is he going to gate rush him? Oh, yeah, he was gate rushing him. Not really. He wanted to kill the Rohirrim for a commitment. He's getting out once again. And that's bad because Rohan lost everything that he had. Yeah, he lost literally everything. He had three <laughs> Rohirrim and he lost them pretty much in the last 20 seconds. That's like throwing your lead into the garbage. You know what I'm saying? That's really bad. But there comes the commitment. That's a bad combination of the units. They are extremely weak against enemy combos. Because the pikes on the front, they're going to get melted from the enemy archers, you know? And that's why I personally would never recommend you to get, ar get combos like that. They're only good against trample. But it wars against anything else. They are also slower than the crossbowman Urukai combination. So keep that please in mind. This Lord is almost level 5, but not quite yet. But he has Therian leadership, which means which is one of the best leaderships actually in the game. And when you think about that, Therian also costs you only 1200. So with 1200, you get 50 damage with the armor. It's kind of insane. The only other unit slash uh, heroes that can do that is Witch King for 8000 and Drummer Troll. For also almost the same price like Theorin, but you also need to get your troll cage to level 2 first. Okay, big commitment. Alvin allies will be used once again, but this time defensively, into the war chant. Theodian has to be the main target. Lourdes is sitting level 5. That means 60% more damage leadership for the combos now. They have right now, once again, 160% damage leadership. Lourdes has to be careful because the second day he steps on, and even the Gondon Eyes, they need to be careful. They, they have just too much leadership right now. Even though he was... Oh, that's the thing. You can't lose Theorin like that. You can't. You shouldn't. The Gondon Eyes actually quite tanky. What a beautiful engagement from Gondor there. And Theorin, yeah. He might be a sportive and great hero, but also he's squishy at the same time. If you don't pay attention for a small second, for a small time, for a single second, you will lose him. You can't even react that fast, you know? You can't. Right. And uh, now is the time for the counterattack, I'm assuming. We have so many Gondor Knights on the field. Holy Quacamole. He's spamming Gondor Knights from this table all the time. Which is a playstyle I like to see a lot. Like, he's not going for the lame play. Which could, you know, be building the Siege Wargs and getting trebuchets on the field. Which is going to be a nightmare for the Rohan Isengard to, uh, team to deal with. But he want to participate in the game actively. By spamming a lot of Gondor Knights, using them for the map control, using them for rushes. PowerPoint wise, we have uh, almost one PowerPoint collected after the Alvin Wood for the Rohan player Ragnar. He has also, of course, draft in heal. And yeah, he has not that much money. To, for his defense, he was playing only with one single farm outside all the time. It's kind of the fault from the Isengard player, not gonna lie. Altaria is kind of, you know, having the greatest eco of the game, but not making the best of that. He was even really slow with the first attack on the other side a jackal the gondor player in my opinion the mvp of this game he has three power points collected after the elven allies elvin wood and heal look his money he's potentially saving for gandalf he is three thousand away from that and altaria the isengard player has also two power points uh, it's two power points away from getting the freezing rain and felixanius needs three lords or Theoden has been crippled down once again Theoden, you will see what's gonna happen to him He's trying to build, but he's gonna get melted, you know? Very, very squishy hero, unless you have them, you have him level 4 with, you know, with the Glorious Judge. It's gonna make him also quite tanky. But also, this Isengard player has now, right now, 110% damage. Lourdes is back on the menu, boys. Gondor Knights, you gotta get away. And look at this pressure. These meals are going down. We have a level, <laughs> level 9 Gondor Knight. That's pretty impressive. Hit and run, you know? You don't need to overcommit. This Lourdes is on the hand. But this Lord is getting away. There is a limited range of the Cripple, of course. And the Cripple ability alongside with the Fireball are the two abilities in BFME 1 that can be missed. So it's gonna go on cooldown, but you won't hit the target. 
No other ability, no smite from Eobin, no spear throw from Eomia, no easter die from Gandalf, nothing can be missed besides Fireball and Cripple, which is kind of ironic because these are the two heroes from the Isengard faction, you know? So both the Isengard heroes are able to miss the target. Okay, so we have this Isengard player now with also three mills outside, he's gonna grow rich with industry being used inside the piece. He might be even able to see for the White Wizard himself. This Rohan has to get his shields, that's gonna be also his plan. Hildren is getting recruited once again, and yeah, recruit, uh, reviving him is kind of cheap, but also costs you still money and time, you know? And the game slowed down, and imagine that Isengard player going for an attack a bit earlier. Because you have seen at the beginning of the game yourself, by the time this Isengard player had full bees, this Isengard had only 3 furnaces, like he had a huge and massive advantage, which he was not able to snowball with, you know? So you see how much pressure the Gondor player is able to put on the Rohan Isengard team? Like he's drawing all their attention and forcing them to be around their own side of the map all the time, which is not gonna win you the game. And now we have the White Wizard. So eventually he will have to deal with two White Wizards now. Yeah, that's gonna be actually indeed the case. Oh, that's gonna be tough. Which one you wanna cripple though? That's the big question. You, you know, you can always use one of the Wizards as a bait. So show him the Saruman and let him cripple and then this Gandalf can engage or the other way around. Even though I would never risk Gandalf, Gandalf is the best hero in battle for middle of one by far. But in some situations the Saruman can be game changing too. Especially with the Warm Tongue, in which you know, which will give him the chance to steal the enemy army for like a medium sized duration, uh, you know, and then you clump them up and go for a Visa Plus right after this spell is released, and boom, <laughs> you get like power points ra raining from the sky pretty much. You then have to be careful. Gandalf is here level 5, Easter Red is almost, almost able, not able, not you know, 100 to 0. Oh, but Gandalf is running it down. Oh my goodness, okay. That's gonna be a big fight. Rohan has Elvin Wood, Gondor has Elvin Wood. He might need to use Elvin Wood here. Yeah, that's like, that's not gonna do much for you. He's gonna die still in a second. Look at the burst damage, do you see that? Theodin is level 3. Freezing Rain is going to be used from Altaria. This is the purple Isengard player at the bottom right side. Felix Anios has no Freezing Rain yet. He's gonna use the Warm Tongue from Saruman to steal the enemy Rohirrim. He's just waiting for the power points to be ready for, the, for his own Freezing Rain. This Lord has no Cripple yet, he has to be careful. He has the power points now, Freezing Rain is gonna be unlocked and immediately used. Now, nobody has leadership. And it, that's what I'm trying to say, these combos are stronger. The cross Crossbow and Urukai combo are stronger. And the Gondor Knights are extremely effective in this kind of situations against non-buffed and non-leadership uh, combos, you know? as they are, once again, extremely tanky against them, since uh, the Night Shield and Heavy Armor are just a counter to these kind of units. But the thing is, if Theodin ever gets level 4, that's gonna be a different story, trust me on that one, Fireball is coming in Clash, Theodin has to run for his life, half a level needed for the glory days of Rohan. Almost level 7 loot, Pillage is gonna make sure that you get money every time you or the nearby allied units are killing enemy units slash structures and this is gonna be a huge reward if you are able to kill heroes like Lourdes or Theodin for example or even potentially Aragorn later on which we might see yeah that's gonna be actually indeed the case Aragorn is, means even more damage leadership and this is again able to stack with each other like okay let's count for a second okay Warchan 50 uh, Theodin 50 Lourdes 60 and <laughs> Aragorn 50 that's 210 percent damage leadership ladies and gentlemen and maybe this number doesn't tell you anything let me explain you this in this kind of uh, way you know like we have seen Gandalf right like you know he will not be seen for a small second when this combos every one of them is gonna are gonna be able to attack him one single time he's gonna get bursted down even through heal from 100 to 0 multiple times like Saruman would get blown up Lourdes couldn't stand a, sh a chance. They would also get blown up. Leadership is something else in BFME 1. So if you are normally a BFME 2 and or Rise of the Witch King player yourself, you potentially don't understand my point, but maybe in this game you will get the chance to see. Aragorn is level 5, has Anduril's sword. 
And Duril Swat is gonna make him extremely tanky. Indeed, he's going to be the tankiest hero in the game by far when he is using the Blade Master and has the Anduril Sword unlocked from the Spearbook. Now, uh, and once again, Aragorn is the only hero in the entire game who's able to tank the Breath Fire from Balrog when he's ignited. Nobody else can ever do that. The camp in the middle is gonna be captured by the Rohan player. That's gonna give him the chance to get some sustain with the well, some additional damage leadership once again from the statue, which also gives you 100% damage leadership. It looks like the Yellow Isengard player wants to commit. It's a bad commitment. Looks like they have also leadership back. Warchan has been used. Gandalf is back on the menu. No cutters, all game log from the Gonza player. What a, what a great performance. He's not going for the lame. Oh, what's happening here? I don't know what's going on really. Where is Theorian when we need him? Aragorn is diving in. Gondor Knights are strong, but are they strong enough? He's gonna steal one of the enemy combos with the Warm Tongue. This Gandalf, uh, this Lourdes, or oh, Gandalf got crippled down. Uh, I mean, Saruman got crippled down. Now Gandalf is be, he's gonna be able to engage. And indeed, he's going for a beautiful Visa Plus. Boom! And now he can even kill. Oh, Gandalf has been killed from Aragorn. What is going on? What a fiesta. This, uh, I mean, Saruman got killed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> level 7 Gandalf. Is he was able to kill Saruman. Theoden got killed once again. Theoden is level 4. He was not able to use the Glorious Charge. It looks like the Gondor Isengard team are forced to disengage for now. Aragorn is to be careful. There is still a lot of leadership. And also the Lightning Sword and Easter Light are able to hurt you big time. Especially when your Blade Master is on cooldown. Okay. So... The Saruman has to be revived. Lourdes is alive. That means Gandalf has to watch out. Also, this Saruman has been, has been taken down. PowerPoint wise, Eagle Allies summon is going to be available for the next big fight. Eagles are hitting like an absolute truck against heroes. Like, that means even Aragorn would be taken down in no time. In no time. Oh, that's the attack now against the main base of Isengard with the Gondor Knights. And also, of course, our, you know, Gandalf is gonna lead the army, prepare for battle. And whenever something comes nearby, he can always use the Eagle Alliance. And Gondo is unmatched with the summons in the lead game. You know, you have the best summons by far, like mentioned in many, many different videos. There comes the Eagle Alliance summon. There are many, many level 3 furnaces. And Lourdes is gonna be his target. <laughs> you know, each Eagle hit, needs to hit him twice and he's Gunners. And that means Gandalf can do whatever he pleases. They are taking a lot of damage from the towers, and that's the that's the advantage, you know? He's putting pressure on this base, and now his ally can move on this base. That's why the purple Isengard player is forced to split. Oh, don't underestimate Gandalf, uh, Aragorn! Oh, you can't stand like that. The thing is, when you are using the Easter Light uh, with Gandalf, after that, you are kind of forced to look how tanky he is. Do you see that, guys? That's crazy, am I right? Oh my goodness. He's, he shouldn't use the Atelas, by the way. He would have get he would have killed Gandalf. He also lost his animation time when he's using Atelas. He's not able to, you know, auto attack in the meantime. So he could have killed Gandalf for sure. And that's gonna give him almost level nine. And remember, this is a game changing hero. Like Gandalf, Aragorn and Gandalf are the two heroes in BFM one that are level that have a level ten ability. The other one, uh, Gandalf has the War of Power, kill surrounding units in Nosta Crest. You shall not pass moment, and Aragorn is able to summon Army of the Dead, which can be as devastating as the War of Power, even more in some situations. Like War of Power against fully buffed and leadership army, you can't hurt them unless you use Freezing Rain or the Elven Wood. But most of the time, you need to get into the close range to be able to use it effectively, while Aragorn can use the Army of the Dead, which is gonna kill you regardless how much leadership you have, you know? So. And it's gonna fish your power points, especially against infantry heavy army like Isengard has right now. Okay, that's gonna be a big attack. They have both freezing rain ability available. Alt Altaria, the purple Isengard player, is six power points away from getting the Balrog summon unlocked. Oh, that's gonna be a big fight, guys. Big, big fight is incoming. Freezing rain is gonna nullify all the leadership bonuses. All of the leadership bonuses are gonna be gone now for both the. Oh, the glorious charge. Oh, the trample. Remember the Isengard armies? They have all the... Vo oh my goodness. Gandalf is hitting level 8. What a miss messy fight is happening in the middle. I don't know what's going on. I see Glorious Charge shining bright like a diamond. Aragorn get crippled down. This Saruman is able to steal one of the combos for a short duration. The Lord was killed. Remember, he is trying to revive him, but he needs still time, some time. Two wizards, double trouble. And the combos are falling apart. I, this... 
Oh, boom! Once again on your face, son. Almost level 9. I would love to see Gandalf level 10. The outputs or the Sita is going down. Aragorn is tanky, but is he tanky enough? Dance is, yes, he's tanky enough. He's, oh, oh my goodness. Double, double trouble. Double wizard, double trouble. Oh, man. Okay, Jekyll has only... Oh, the Balrog summon at the same time, my dude. Remember, Balrog is able to kill the entire Gondor base himself. And the Gondor has no camp. If Gondor base falls, that's gonna be GG. What is this game, my dude? Breathfire? Beautiful Breathfire. You see, he's canceling the... Oh, he mi The bubble saved Gandalf. Did you see it? Did you see that? Gandalf can maybe kill him, my dude. Gandalf can... He has used heal. Easter light. Uh, you need to use lightning sword. Gandalf is gonna kill him. Gandalf is gonna kill him, maybe. Oh, yeah, but he's buying time. He's smart. He's buying time. But now everything is on cooldown. What else? Bizarre Blast is not gonna hurt him. Uh, fire whip him. Fire whip him. Now nah, he's gonna die now. Phew. <laughs> this is such a fiesta game. What is going <laughs> I mean, he will be able to survive that because of Gandalf still, you know? Gandalf. <laughs> Balrog's time is gone. Sorry for laughing, but it was. <laughs> that was hilarious, man. Come on now. <laughs> okay. And Gondor is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> How much money does he have? Uh, let me check. He has actually a lot of money, dude. He is, he is gonna be able to revive Gandalf in no time. Like, he has a lot of cash. But of course, it's gonna give advantage now to the Rohan Isengard team. All this Isengard player needs also only 4 power points. But remember, this Rohan has the middle camp. So even if you kill the castle, or oh, Lourdes is getting crippled down, they know now that Gandalf is dead. So you can, of course, cripple whatever. But there is the Saruman. He has Warm Tongue on cooldown. That's a Claw Break from the Rohan player this time. Claw Break is nice because what it does is reduce the enemy armor and slow them down. And especially in this kind of situations, you make them weaker, the enemy units, right? What a, what a fight. Jekyll is still four power points away from the army of the dead, but he needs that right now. He needs that now. He needs Gandalf also here, but Gandalf has a really long revive time, you know? Eagle summon, he's gonna try to fish power points in the middle. That's his plan. He has to maybe kill Saruman, I don't know. Gondor Knights will be taken over. The attack is gonna be almost impossible to defend. There is one single Ballista. Is Fireball clumped? Oh, this Fireball could be a bit better. Saruman has to run for his life. When you, I mean, they are casters, right? They need to play around the cooldowns. So Eagles, they need to make something happen. Oh, the Balrog summon! I didn't see that coming. I mean, I knew he was four power points away from that, but you see, Aragorn doesn't care, boy. Like, Gandalf would have, would be dead by now, by the way. Aragorn doesn't care. I mean, now when he's using the breath fire, he's gonna die. Like, Aragorn doesn't die that fast. Now he's gonna die, though, because he has no Blade Master. <laughs> Look, the thing is, he can't hit him. <laughs> When he's stepping on him, he's getting knocked back. So the auto attack is missing all the time. What is this fiesta, my dude? What is going on? Guys, smash that like button for this game. Come on now. This game deserves at least 300 likes. Please show the sport. Go like the video right now. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna count till three. One, two, three. We like, like, like. Glorious charges on cooldown. The Balrog is flying back again. He doesn't know what he needs to do. But the camp in the meantime has been taken down. And wait a second. Hold on a second, and Gondor still only needs one power point. One power point is actually easy to get, you know? Especially when you kill some towers left and right. Oh, that's a glorious uh, charge, potentially. He's, it's almost up. They've also looked their levels, looked their leadership. They've also Aragorn leadership, Theodore leadership, Warchan has been used on them. They have now crazy amount of DPS while being extremely tanky. Glorious charge for Death and Glory. Fireball only knocks them back, but doesn't kill them anymore. Deal damage to the economy from Isengard. That's all you gotta do. And look at the Altarius Balrog summon. It's almost back up. It's almost back up. Gondo is desperately trying to get the power points. He's missing for the army of the dead summon. It's really close. Less than half a power point away. What a fiesta. What a phenomenal. What a beautiful and amazing game this is. And also funny at the same time, you know? Some funny stuff happened for sure. Is Gandalf back yet? Almost. 
Yeah, you heard him, guys. A wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. That's the Gandalf I love to see. Almost there. A quarter. He will get there eventually. But also, this Aragorn is almost level 10. Like, that's crazy. The thing is, Aragorn can kill army of the dead. When you... Guys. When you... Oh, the Balrog summon for the second time. He's gonna, gonna be able to stop him for the second time. The thing is, Gondor doesn't have too much money anymore, you know? And losing these buildings, he just what he was rebuying, is gonna hurt him big time. Beautiful breath fire, he killed the Gondor Knights as they came out. Gondor has almost no units left on the field anymore. He has, I see two Gondor Knights only. Does, he doesn't have the power points yet. Ar you can't fight Aragorn. Oh, you can't fight Aragorn like that. Aragorn doesn't care, bro. Oh, but he has killed the Legolas, but Gandalf got crippled down. Gandalf Aragorn is gonna also get level 10. Ga oh my god, what is going on in this game? What a fiesta. What is that's crazy, my dude. What? They both summoning army of the dead. How much Rohan needs for the army of the dead? Also not much, but in the meantime, Gondo base has fallen. Aragorn goes down. Now Gondo was able to buy the middle camp before he goes down. No way. AOD is gonna be gone very soon. And now the Isengard Rohan team are kinda screwed. Like, Gondor doesn't have too much money, he can't even revive his Gandalf, but he's in the game, and he has summons, you know, he can summon Rohirrim Elves, and eagle, Eagles are almost back up too, and Rohan doesn't have too much money either, so he has to revive Aragorn, that's gonna cost him 3,500, Legolas, 1,400, Glorious Charge, Zapla, Saruman is saying, this time I'm on your side, Gandalf, I'm not gonna let them kill Gondor. Gondor is under my pro protection. Hearing got crippled down, but you can see Glorious Charge is making him extremely tanky. Heal is gonna be used, but I think he's gonna go down regardless. The sec you, you see the second <laughs> the second Glorious Charge disappears, he's gonna get one shot you know? But there comes the commitment. We have Cloud Break ready for the Rohan player for the fight to make the enemy units weaker, but they have also a lot of leadership in this kind of situations, guys. They have statue for 100 percent more damage leadership. Keep that please in mind. And they have also constant healing over time, you know? Well, Legolas is back. Aragorn has a longer revive time. I mean, Gondo is not anywhere close to the point in which he can either revive his Gandalf or rebuy his fortress, you know? Isengard, and that's the thing. In BFME 1, there is no possibility for you to send money to your ally, unlike in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King. So this Gondo is kind of out of the game. Hulk Strike. Balrog summon, this time on Rohan base. Aragorn. Will be using the army of the dead from his level 10. Eagle summon. Oh, are they gonna try to finish the Rohan? They can. Look, Aragorn's damage, guys. Do you see that? Please, please, watch this. What is Aragorn damage? What is Aragorn's damage? Can somebody explain me? What is Aragorn's damage, my dude? Oh, he... Okay, never mind. He, uh, he died. No, he didn't die. What? He was screaming. He's gonna kill Balrog. Oh, heal from Gondor on the Balrog. Dude, Aragorn hits him like a truck, but... The Rohan base might fall. He should be using the army of the dead to actually finish the Gondor play at the same time. This is the best game I was able to cast so far. He killed him. But the Eagles are going to be able to finish. And Rohan, guys, is going down. Ragnar has been defeated. Now it's a 2v1 situation. Holy moly, guys. What do you guys think about this game? Please let me know in the comments down below. And once again, if you haven't done it yet, make sure to like this video and subscribe if you want to see more videos like that in the future. This channel is dedicated to Battle for Middle Earth games. And what a phenomenal... I'm speechless. I have a big smile on my mouth right now, guys. What a, what a beautiful and amazing match that was, which is not over yet, because the thing is, Balrog is gonna be available soon, uh, it's not gonna matter, I believe. I don't see a coming back from this situation anymore, I am speechless, I don't know what to say. This Gondor was able to stay in the game after losing the fortress, healing his allies Balrog to save the momentum. The vestations for money boost. The money is not gonna win you the game because if you can't take out, out Gondor, he will have the Rohan allies available, Elven allies available, Gandalf is gonna eventually come back to the field because he will eventually get some farms left and right. There is a level 3 farm, he should be asking his ally to get all the middles, all the mills by the way. 
because he has no farms inside the base. Okay. Oh, there comes the Balrog summon. On top of the enemy army this time. Oh, Balrog underneath is like a one-shot moment, you know? Regardless how much leadership they have, they will still die in a second. He's gonna use breath fire on the enemy combos to save his own base. What is going on in this game? Gondor has not enough power points yet. I mean, and he doesn't have army of the dead yet, but it's gonna be changed in about like 10 seconds. And I believe if he gets the chance to summon the army of the dead, he will be good to go. He'll be good to go. He can army of the dead can also kill Balrog in no time, so please keep that in mind. There we go, army of the dead. He was spamming the button. Trust me on that one. Oh yeah, he's losing all the staff. Can they kill Balrog in time? Balrog doesn't have too much time anymore. Anyway, he's trying hard. Cloud Break will be used from Gonda as well. Doesn't affect heroes like Balrog. Balrog is unaffected from this. He has not enough money even, guys, to rebuy the fortress. He has not even enough money to... Yeah, he's gonna get defeated too. A 2v2 match turns into a 2v1 match. Jekyll has been defeated, but Isengard has now two castles. And the purple Isengard has only one. Altaria, I'm assuming, is gonna lose the game because, you know... <laughs> the Balrog summon is gonna be, gonna be available from Felix Anio soon. I don't know, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say about this game, guys. You tell me. You let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the performance of these players. And, you know, this is such an entertaining game and skillful game at the same time. It's a back and forth game. It's really hard to predict who's gonna win at the end of the day. It was looking so great for Gondor Isengard at the beginning, then it was switching to Rohan Isengard, and it was again Gondor Isengard, again Rohan Isengard. So it was really hard to predict, and it's still, you know, until the very last moment, until the Rohan base fall, uh, I didn't know. I mean, I was actually assuming or expecting that the Rohan Isengard team is gonna win. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Because the Gondor was broke. He did have no money. He was poor, you know? And all you needed to do, Aragorn came... Go with Aragorn into the middle, use your army after that, kill the enemy units, and finish off the castle. Or the camp. And GG. The new wolf riders have just shown up. Yeah, now it's about, uh, of course, economical advantage from the Yellow Isengard player. He has much more money, he has two full bases, and that's the Balrog summon now. This Isengard player lost his Tita recently. He doesn't even have heroes on the field. Uh, he was buying the camp in the middle. He has still some money, it's not like he's broke or something, but the thing is, at some point, eventually he will run out of money, unlike the other Isengard player who has two full bases, who will have en enough money eventually very soon to even buy the third base. So three castles against one. But the game 2v2, which was the beginning of the game, turned at the end of the day to a 1v1 between Isengard. I don't know. Um, I don't even know how to title this video on the YouTube channel, I'm not gonna lie guys. What a phenomenal game. And Right now, it's very late in Germany, it's like 1am in the morning, and I'm so hyped from this game, I can't even potentially go to sleep anymore. Holy guacamole. And because you guys enjoy BFME 1 so much, I wanted to cast for tomorrow, for the upcoming day. And hopefully you guys gonna still in I mean, enjoy this. Uh, I didn't expect this replay to be that good. Altari has been defeated, and that's it ladies and gentlemen, GG well played. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for more BFME content in the future and also follow me on my Twitch channel for my live streams for BFME tournaments and events and also just to be able to get to know me a bit better. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a track and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.